Hi, Mary Liz. How are you doing? I, I've got you queued up here. I want to talk about your poster, and I also want to talk a little bit about um, the, pro the project requirements. So I have those open here, and I have you open over here. And, uh, so we'll be going back and forth. So anyways, you have your object um, that must be dominant image, make it bigger part. So I'm, I, I'm guessing this is the dominant image. Yes, that's the dominant image. However, is that image is that telling us exactly what we need to know without reading the text? In other words, is that image powerful enough to keep this poster to, to, to um, automatically show the topic of this poster with no text over here? And I, I, I don't think the answer is yes. And the reason is because this image can be construed in so many different ways. For example, this, this could be about outdoors. It could be about dogs. It could be about many different things. So it's not screaming boots to us, which it should, okay? Um, um, the poster should, must include an, um, results from one of the use of your object. And I'm guessing that, that this, on top of this big giant rock, is the results of climbing up from the boots. But that's too convoluted. Um, plus you're trying to use your dominant image as your result image. So it's, again, it's just a, I think it's a diluted um, message. Okay, uh, poster must include two components. Oh, you, uh, okay, yeah, uh, two components, um, selected object of your object, for example, is a mountain bike, the components would be like the gears and blah, blah, blah. So we, we don't have any components here. We have boots, boots, and an outdoor boot. So in other words, we don't have like a, the heel or the zipper or the buckle or something that would indicate a component of the boot. Um, I think there's plenty of really super interesting parts of boots. I'm, I'm a boot guy, so I can appreciate this piece. So, um, you know, the little eyelets, every, there's really interesting things um, in the design of boots. So um, try to find those and use those in your, in your layout. Um, components um okay and then it says here feel, feel free to, to show the gears without the rest of the wheel and and all of this stuff and it says your images are not supposed to look like they're in a box but you have your images in circles so you know technically you do have them confined and we're trying to stay away from that we're trying to make this whole thing breathe as a poster where right now we're getting this definite magazine article vibe out of this and, and i think that's a mistake um for the assignment. I, I really want you to approach this as a poster and not a magazine um, cover page. Okay, um, and I'm gonna show you some examples of what I'm talking about. The poster must include a par one paragraph of text. You've got a whole, I mean, you've got two whole text blocks full of text. And I think you're a little text heavy here for a poster. Um, again, giving it that magazine look. Design in everyday life must be a present, present and um, you must include some small caption text, either with your result image or with your component. And I guess that's your little caption text there. Um, and then we have this, these design requirements, white background, asymmetrical. Um, your, your imagery must come in contact. So in other words, with the edge of the page, that's called a bleed. So you have that one there and you have that one there. Um, your design must combine images that are, are in boxes or as part of a background and cropped individually without backgrounds. Do not put everything in a box. Well, guess what? I mean, these are kind of, you know, uh, put them in a box. As I said, it's a circle, but, you know, technically they are confined. So, okay. And then full color, keep your image, your image dominant and you must use a grid. Now I see you've overlaid this grid on your work. Um, Mary Liz, and that's great. It's really good, but I, there's a couple of suggestions there. Number one, in your um, InDesign, there's tools to make your grid. So let me just pull out Command R here so I can show you something. Now, you, know, you have these basic grid lines, but don't forget in a grid, it, these are double lines here. So in, for instance, that would be a double line. Okay, so that you place one on this side. So see your gutters here? That's the space between. Those are too tight together because these should be double lines, which would just increase this whole thing to all together. All right, so you have a, instead of having a box 
resting on a box, you have a box, then a space, then a box, then a space, then a box. And if you want to look at that example from um, last week with that 5 by 7 grid that we used, go ahead and take a look at that. You'll see little spaces between all your horizontal and vertical lines in your grid. And those will, will assist in spacing as well as alignment. Okay, now, so those are the requirements. Now, my suggestions are, are a little bit different. Okay, first, the first thing is that is, that, is, that, is your, your, your typography. We got some mistakes in typo, typography. Um, we talked about stroking type. Um, that's a mistake because this, the, the kerning that we worked on, this is kerned so tightly. And a lot of reason, all of these are kerned so tightly because your letters are almost touching because um, because of those strokes that you've placed on your letters. See, the reason you don't want to stroke letter forms is because it actually changes the shape of letters. As we can see here, that G right there is not supposed to be touching itself in the bowl there in the middle. All right, so that's a really good example of why we don't stroke letter forms. Um, okay, this is not adhering to any sort of grid, the center aligned uh, composition right here. So we again, we need to adhere to a grid. Same here. You got the center aligned stuff, um, and then your center type. So so again, adding this magazine feel. This drop cap. If you're going to do a drop cap, make it obvious. This just looks like you're, you've kind of halfway decided. Um, um, if you're not going to have a indent, you definitely want to have a space between your paragraphs. Okay, this typographic treatment is different than this one, as we can see. This is much tighter and darker in typographic color, whereas this one is spread out much more. The, the, the leading um, is much greater than this one, so you have some inconsistencies there. Okay, and you're using some magazine techniques again here. This is called a, a call out, and that's a magazine technique, so you really don't want to include it in a poster. Okay, suggestions to carry on from here. I'm sorry, I'm sick taking so long. I just did a quick search. Look at I found some cool look at this. Look at this shot right here. That's a cool shot of a boot. I mean, we could do a lot with that. Um, that's obviously before reading anything, that poster is about boots. Um, let me give you another example. Um, here's a nice example of integrating type with boots, with the boots. That's interesting, but there's more. Um, I ha oh, here's a good one. Here's yeah, that's a good one too. So, so you see what I mean? So, so there's just like these really interesting ways of showing boots, like those eyelets and all the different parts of boots, like a close up of that right there. Um, you see what I'm saying? So, so we have all these interesting things. I'll take a look at this. Disregard the type, okay? And this is center aligned, so I'm not a big fan of center alignment. I think the typography on this could be a lot better. However, the image is really, really great. So I want you to start thinking about ways to, okay, so look at this. This is saying the final steps of safety. It's screaming it out, R, okay? And then obviously this is about boots. So, and then we take a look, take a good close look at this, and I'll open that guy. Might as well open that guy. Where was it? I don't know where it was. I'll forget that. So anyway, so that guy right there, and then let's look at, okay, you see what I'm saying? Look how tame this magazine is, is, is more looking like a really tame magazine piece. So let's work on it, okay? Um, I know I took too long. I'm so sorry about that. But anyways, um, just take those comments and try to rework it. Listen to the um, video once or twice and, and, um, and take it from there, okay? Mary Liz, thanks very much.